on CNN. Welcome back. She starred on Broadway as Dolly Levi and Lorelei. She was nominated for an Oscar in the movie Thoroughly Modern Millie. Now Carol Channing has joined the circus, TV's Circus of the Stars, in which she looks like she'll have uh, more fun than a barrel of monkeys on December the 15th. <laughs> There's no limit to what she can do or what she will say. Welcome to my friend Carol Channing. Oh, old friend Rona, nice to see you. Can we say hello to Larry? You may certainly say hello to Larry. I don't know if he's exactly up or not, but I'm quite sure someone will tell him, one of the nurses. We're so happy, Larry King, that you're doing so well after your surgery and we're just thinking of you every minute. <laughs> now when we saw the pictures of you, you have a new leading man. I have a new leading man. Mary Martin, I just finished touring <laughs> with her, told me, she said, Rona, that the important thing is who is your leading man. See, she's worked with A.T.O. Pinza and Charles Boyer and all that crowd. So finally, I have my ideal leading man, and we'll be seen together on December the 15th on the Circus of the Stars, Rona. He can time a laugh like George Burns. I mean, you couldn't work with anyone better. And do you know that when I first met him, I'll never forget, well, I must tell you, he's a baboon. His name is Max. <laughs> and the first time I went into the cage with him, Rona, the, uh, I was, I, I mean, the, the trainer said, you must remember this man. He said, when you are in that cage, remember to remind him who is boss. So I thought, I hear something somebody talking so All I'll right. take this so I, I thought I went in there and Max screeched and screamed well it was the most character building thing for me that ever happened I went straight to the telephone and I called Betty White my dear friend you know the hit Golden Girls I certainly do well you know that Betty is a great she's very big in animals yes very large in animals and yes. you know that she has supervises a zoo and she's written books on animals and all that and I said now Betty the first time I went into the cage, Max screamed. He hung upside down. He rattled the cage. He swung toward me with his fangs open. He was, everybody came running, said, what's the matter with Max? It, we, you know that a baboon is the most, the fiercest animal in the jungle. And I was the first one to work with him outside of his trainer. He had never met anybody else but his trainer. And I said, Betty, if I talk to him very gently, will he understand me? And she said, oh, Carol, we all had to get used to you at first. <laughs> Isn't that Betty to, do, to side with the animal? Wouldn't she, though? You know? Yes, of course she yes, would. Yes, that's Betty. I've known her for some 30 years, and Betty sides with the animal every time. Everyone says that the two most difficult people to work with, in a way, because they're scene stealers, are children and animals. Except Max. Except Max. Except Max, because slowly we became eternal friends. And fi he used to shake at first. If they could only see what we all go through with Circus of the Stars, to become friends enough to work together. And I I looked at him, Rona, and I smiled at him once, and he smiled back at me, and you know, he looked just like my father, and you know why? He noticed, he noticed how I smiled, and he smiled back at me the same way. Your father was a lecturer, right? A Christian science lecturer? Yes, he was. And I wanted to tell Larry King not to worry about anything, that Mary Baker Eddy and I will take care of everything. <laughs> do, you, do you practice that? I mean, if you ever get sick, do you ever call a doctor? I'll tell you, Rona, I was born in Christian science. I'm not a practitioner. And so the essential thing about Christian science is not whether you call a doctor or not. That is not the essential thing. The essential thing is I, I have a certain training I'm unaware of. I don't know. I call it me because I don't know any different way. Are you a healer? Oh, no. No? Oh, no, I'm not a practitioner. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an actress. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with, <laughs> with more of Carol Channing and your telephone calls. That's 213-469-5533 right after these messages. Come on back. The multi-talented Carol Channing. I have so many things I really want to talk to you about. You know, we were discussing something a little bit more serious before in the previous segment about the press and yes. the accuracy in the media. Um, has the press ever printed anything about you that was ever really hurtful? Yes, they do in the inquiring, whatever that is, and the, the uh, whatever that. But. Um, 
You know, I heard them saying, why don't performers have more of a sense of humor about themselves when we take these pot shots at them? And I really think, Rona, that was a fascinating discussion, I thought. And we could tell where you stood. And I loved you for it. But anyway, um, uh, maybe it's because I know you too. But just the same, um, why doesn't the press have a sense of humor when it comes to Joan? Rivers. I mean, Joan is in a character. She is playing that character. She meant to be funny. When Joan is mad at the Queen of England, we all laugh because it's Joan being jealous and Joan being insecure and Joan not knowing that she has a leg to stand on. And therefore, it's funny when she says, oh, well, oh Liz Taylor, I hate her. Well, of course she doesn't hate her. I know the woman, I know Joan. Just, We're laughing because she is so insecure. She's got a characterization developed there. Why doesn't the press see that that's a comedy character she's playing? It's not Joan Rivers. Conversely, I think over the years, people have thought that you were really Dolly Levi. Well, that's good. If they didn't think so, I'd be a rotten actress, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, that's yes, my goal. A, but as a result, because Dolly was such a lovable, wonderful person, they automatically make that transition and say, Carol Channing must be a wonderful, marvelous person. Well, but Joan Rivers, who takes on these rather uh, coarse characters and biting people... And they, she never is coarse, but as the, you the, know. But the point, the point is, is that everyone then says, well, then Joan has to be like that person because she plays her too well. Because she does it well. What else? Why would we want to look at somebody that does, do, does it badly? Well, how did you feel when, when, when a periodical like the tabloids write things about you that are untrue? What do you do? You hope your work stands for, for itself. You hope that in your work, you can't conceive of a character unless it's part of you or you understand her. And you can only understand what's yourself again. You just eliminate the parts of yourself that are not that character. So, so you can't, all you can do is hope that your work speaks for itself. Is there something that you'd like to set the record straight about? Something that's ever been said about you that you never had the opportunity to correct that you'd like to correct now? I mean, something that's been written about you that you know was an absolute lie that you'd like to use this forum tonight to say, I want to tell you about this How story. How fortunate I must be. Rona, I don't have it. I must be very fortunate. Also, I must not be, uh, I'm sure, now next season we're going into television, a sit, uh, it's a sitcom. I wish I could talk more about it, it's for CBS. And it may be that then I will be fodder, then you're on the firing line. Maybe that's the way you judge how important a person is in the entertainment field. Well, there's someone from Appleton, Wisconsin, who'd like to talk to right. you now. Appleton? Yes, I'd like, one of my favorite movies was Thoroughly Modern Millie, and I thought she was fabulous in it. And there's one point where she stuck her head out of a plane, and she said the word raspberry, and that has stuck in my mind for years, the way she said it, and I would love to hear her say that one more time. And do you know what I've got to tell you? Julie Andrews and I were actually in a plane, and we were in a plane, a rickety old World War One. but raspberries, was that it? And we were yes. in, do you know that motor stopped for a minute, and it's something that Julie and I'll never get over. I mean, that cements a friendship like nothing else. We thought we were going into eternity together. But it was an old World War I plane, and the motor stopped for a minute, and I had hit my knee against some kind of an old stick that was up there, and they had a pilot in the back, thank goodness, who said, push that stick forward, and we did. You were once made um, the Nixon's enemy list. Yes, I made the hate list. Now, the Rona, list. are you proud of me? I think I might have been very proud of you oh, at the time, but uh, why, why were you on that list? I don't know. Now, they had profound thinkers like um, uh, Arthur Schlesinger, he wants to be called, not Schlesinger. And they had, but do you know they also, and Barbara Streisand and Paul Newman, but they also had, I never had a profound political thought in my life, except they also had Joe Namath, and he doesn't know who the president is, Rona. <laughs> so I don't understand the list. And what were they going to do with us? Put us in ovens? I don't know. But I must say, as hard as we both work forever and ever, I'll never do anything as distinguished as that being on the Nixon hate list. You never missed a single performance as Dolly um, Levi. Where did that kind of discipline come from? 
one, one thing that causes the discipline is if you miss a show, the momentum of the show drops, the backers don't make their money back for six weeks or how, however the show is financed. You can't do that. The show goes downhill. You've got to stay in it. Oh, I wish I could talk more, but I can't right now. So I want to thank you, Carol Channing, for coming tonight, for being with us, along with our other guests. Tomorrow, Valerie Harper and oh. a new life without her TV family, plus the Rolling Stones' Ron Wood. Good night, everyone, and good night, Larry. Feel you're, great. One, you're one of Larry's favorite people. <laughs> <laughs>